What is up this year? LA in a minute. And even though LA's air quality has improved substantially over the last few decades, some days still look like this. In fact, the American Lung Association still grades LA's air quality as an F. So I wanted to know, why is LA so smoggy and what are we doing to improve it? Let's get into it. There's actually a day to pinpoint the first day the smog ever came to Los Angeles. That's July 8th, 1943. And since that day, it's never left. Now, smog at that point was such a foreign concept that people didn't know what it was. They thought it was a gas attack or pollution from the backyard trash incinerators that were common in L.A. at the time. And it wasn't until Caltech scientist and professor Ari Hagen-Smith realized in 1952 that emissions plus sunshine over the L.A. basin trap ozone and particles to form smog. And with that, at least a name was given to the tear-causing and headache-inducing days of the 1950s. And people then, as now, just really didn't know how to deal with it. Though they did have some creative reprieves. And since that point, L.A. has been enveloped by these noxious gases, in some cases, most days of the year. From the 1970s through the late 1990s, Greater Los Angeles experienced around 230 days per year where ozone, the major component of smog, exceeded federal health standards. Wow. And since the American Lung Association has been doing its rankings, 24 of the 25 years have shown Greater Los Angeles considered the smoggiest region and most polluted city in the nation. So what are the major components that cause smog in L.A.? Well, first is the vehicles. There are more than 8 million in the greater Los Angeles region, more than anywhere in the country. Second, LA has the busiest ports in the nation, which means tens of thousands of heavy-duty diesel trucks are on the roads every day. Those are much more pollution-inducing than cars. Another main factor is the climate. Three out of every four days in LA are sunny. And the mountains that ring the LA basin trap the pollution as warm air sits on top of the cool air and prevent it from dispersing. That traps pollution closer to the ground. It's like putting a lid on a pot. And while it's unlikely that we'll ever achieve the type of clear sky days that we saw during COVID, the good news is the number of days like this have been cut in half as LA and California have been at the forefront of rules to reduce emissions from vehicles and industrial facilities. And while the adoption of EVs and cleaner burning car engines have certainly helped, the natural and man-made confluence of factors in Los Angeles have caused more days like this, even here in 2024. So LA's air quality has improved but it's still pretty poor. In fact, it still grades an F. So hopefully these improvements that Los Angeles is working on can help turn these days into crystal clear days in Los Angeles. All right, LA, it's been a minute.